Deputy Catherine Connolly. Cahirly and uh, my specific question is an update on any bilateral engagement that you've had with your Israeli counterpart in relation to the ongoing seizure and demolition of Palestinian property in the occupied, Palest uh, the occupied Palestinian territories. And I say this acutely aware that 158 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli forces in the first six months of this year alone, almost the same number as last year, which was the deadliest year on record since 2006. Yeah. Well, first of all, I was um, hoping to go to um, Israel last week and to the Middle East generally, but that didn't fall, the, the uh, particular people were not available uh, in certain areas, so we've uh, postponed that to a later month, in the next number of months, and I want to visit the Middle East more generally, meet with uh, my Israeli counterpart and others uh, in the region uh, to discuss all of these issues. The ongoing demolition and seizure of Palestinian property is a matter that, that, that I follow closely, along with my European Union counterparts. I am deeply concerned that the United Nations has reported, as I said earlier, a significant increase in such activity in 2023. Visible solidarity with those affected is an important element of our response. Ireland's representative office in Ramallah has made a number of visits, along with the European Union colleagues, to sites of concern in East Jerusalem and the West Bank since April. More, most recently, on Sunday of this week, they joined European Union and international partners in visiting a family facing imminent forced eviction from their home in Jerusalem's old city. Ireland's embassy in Tel Aviv also raises these matters in its regular contact with the Israeli authorities. Such actions by the Israeli authorities are among several worrying trends that we are witnessing including escalating violence and increasing civilian casualties. I've been consistently forthright in underlining Ireland's clear position on these matters, including the obligation of Israel as the occupying power to protect civilians in the occupied Palestinian territory. I've not yet had the opportunity to meet directly with my Israeli counterpart, Foreign Minister Cohn, though hope to do so in due course with a, visit, with a view to reiterating our concerns on these matters. A sustained European Union focus is also a priority. I welcome that the U European Union Special Rep Representative for Human Rights, Eamon Gilmore, visited the occupied Palestinian territory in Israel last week, where he raised concerns about several issues, including settler violence, the use of lethal force by the Israeli Defence Forces, civilian deaths and demolitions. Ireland is part of a group of EU member states that are pursuing compensation for confiscated or demolished humanitarian structures funded by donors such as Ireland through the West Bank Protection Consortium. The consortium sought compensation, compensation of over 1.3 million in respect of confiscated or demolished assets since 2015. Ireland provided 300,000 euros in funding to the consortium in 2022, underlying our commitment to reducing the vulnerability of Palestinian communities living in Area C of the West Bank. Thank you, Tanishta. Deputy Connolly. Thank you, Tanishta. And I know you're on record for repeatedly expressing your concerns. And, and your outrage at what's happening. But the absence of action is really worrying. You talk about a rule, rules-based order in other contexts. And you have, have said here today, which is really s serious, that you feel the two-state solution is receding. And yet we've taken absolutely no action other than expressing our outrage. I welcome that you will be taking a visit. I welcome that Eamon Gilmore is now jumping into action further to the EU. However, we are now facing the bloodiest year. Last year was, and it's increasing. And we have taken absolutely no action. Six organizations remain designated as terrorist organizations. We fund two or three of those. We have an apartheid, um, uh, Israel's apartheid against Palestinians amnesty report, utterly ignored by this government, utterly ignored by Europe, except for Burrell to say he wouldn't like to use that word apartheid. It's not appropriate. Thank you, Deputy. Um, I, I wouldn't accept your general criticism of the Irish governments. In, globally, our, the Irish government would be seen as one of the stronger contributors to this debate and would be considered to, to consistently take a very principled approach on this. When we say action, we, we have to specify, you know, in terms of, first of all, the effectiveness of further actions. We want to work with other European member states. Can we get a significant critical mass of EU member states to take particular positions in respect of this? Um, we work with the Palestinian Authority and representatives of, of, of Palestinians um, in respect of strengthening and deepening the relationship with the European Union. Uh, not all, there's not consensus across the 27 EU member states on this, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and 
with varying degrees of emphasis, different countries have different um, policy approaches um, to, to this. When I, when I referenced earlier the two-state solution, uh, the continued expansion of settlements um, and the, particularly the configuration or the composition of the new Israeli government uh, has, has, uh, leads to my pessimism in terms of the viability of the two-state solution if the current Israeli government's position continues as it has developed from, from, from the moment of its establishment. And I think these are very, I, I just feel it's honest to articulate that point. Uh, we still believe in the two-state solution is the only viable way forward here. Um, and, um, you know, I, I condemn what's going on in respect of the attacks. Um, but it's a matter of judgment as to how further we um, reflect our views. In the meantime, in terms of those organizations that were banned, we've been very supportive of those, not just financially, but in terms of raising it at all in various fora and with our Israeli uh, counterparts. Thank you, Commissioner. Just Deputy Connolly and then Deputy Durkin for a supplemental, and then uh, we'll finish I, up. I don't doubt your bona fides, and I don't doubt what you're saying, that we've been stronger than any other country. That's not the measuring stick. We're an independent country, so what is our attitude in relation to Israel other than expressing concerns? What is it we're saying to Israel? You haven't met with your, um, the, the foreign minister, or whatever the appropriate minister is, while we're approaching a second deadly year in Palestine. You're talking about six organizations that you support. They've been designated terrorist organizations with no substantial evidence. That's what the EU said a year ago, to back that designation. And still we sit idly by and do nothing. We talk about compensation. Can you clarify that? Is that compensation to allow the Palestinian people to rebuild the houses that have been demolished or confiscated? Are we giving them money to get the land? Are we, are we colluding with uh, um, knocking houses and giving them money? What does compensation mean in that regard, but specifically in relation to the six organisations and the, apart and the uh, amnesty report, please? Thank you, Deputy. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I, 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 I will agree in general with, with what the Tonish says and in generally with what Deputy Connolly says as well. In the previous existence, I had occasion to meet with, with uh, all uh, sides in, in, in that d debate and dispute which continues. And I believe that it would be of considerable importance and of considerable influence if at, at on-site level there was a platform to which grievances could be addressed before they boil over into the kind of incursions that we are talking about now. So that that platform could earn the respect of all sides, which is hugely important to my mind. And, and I, I say that on the basis of having met with all sides previously, as I know the, the Taunashta has. Thank you, Deputy. And last words to the Taunashta. Yeah, as I said, we were due to go last week. That was not possible. Um, to, to the area, um, because meeting with people is uh, far more effective. Um, but the, the broader question, we, we, we're not, we don't uh, sit idly by. There are limitations to what a country can, Ireland can do on its own, very real limitations in terms of impact and effectiveness. Um, but, you know, our position in the Security Council, we were not idle on this. That was reflected in the UN Secretary General. Um, you talk at a European Union level, uh, in terms of uh, Josep Borrell and others, um, I, I think they wouldn't view Ireland as a country that stands idly by in relation to all of this. Um, and we're not in any way colluding, but we're simply putting pressure on the Israeli government that if, you, if we are, with other European countries, funding infrastructure in the West Bank um, and it gets destroyed or gets confiscated, we believe uh, that, that there has to be compensation, there has to be a cost. Uh, it's just one other further element of endeavouring to keep pressure on uh, the Israeli government in respect of just recklessly uh, attacking infrastructure that European Union member states have paid for. Um, and this has been going on for years. People are now taking a stand and other member states are taking a stand on this and saying, sorry, you can't destroy a school here or destroy without um, uh, being held to account in some shape or form. Uh, financial is one form of, of accountability, but it's not colluding with, with in any shape or form. I don't think I think that's a, not a fair um, uh, sort of perspective to put on it. Uh, moving on.